ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चैव नरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो मुदीर नष्ट प्रायश भद्रेश नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती ऋतम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवतीष्टी ओम ज्ञानतिमिरांद से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर शिवासादि गौरव भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे डिंग there is no liberation because the subtle body carries us from one material body to another the so bhakti dissolves the subtle body without separate effort we don't have to do anything else we simply have to engage in devotional service bhakti is in a far higher position than mukti because a person's endeavor to get liberation from material engagement is automatically served in devotional service um one very easily gets liberation from material engagement in fact if one chants hare krishna maha mantra in nama bhasa he gets liberation what is nama bhasa what is nama bhasa these things we should know <clears throat> anybody has an idea What is Nama Bhasa? Reflection of uh, pure name, Prabhu. Yeah, but what does it mean practically? So Nama Bhasa is the stage which is free from offenses, free from aparada, and not yet pure name. So it's between. Uh, so simply for our understanding practical understanding we can just understand that it is free from offenses so nama bhasa is the chanting of the holy name which is free of offenses so simply by chanting in nama bhasa one can achieve liberation liberation means the subtle body dissolving and nama bhasa is uh, should be like a early stage for devotees as in very early early on, on we should achieve nama bha we should achieve this liberation brahma bhuta actually the process is so powerful but you know, i was just contemplating saying that we are not completely applying ourselves to the process you know otherwise brahma bhuta we should achieve just like that it's like a side effect and simply by chanting in nama bhasa one achieves liberation which is brahma bhuta and then he goes on to chant in shuddha nama and achieves krishna prema so it's like really not a big deal at all to get liberation if we stick to the process but our problem is actually we put to we add too much of contamination into our life you know and i was i was just contemplating and this contamination is simply in the mind simply in the mind we simply want to think about material things and yeah i mean understandably our mind is not in our control the process for that needs to simply chant simply chant here chant here 
the more troubled our situation is, the more chanting hearing we should do. Such a powerful process. The example is given here that the fire in the stomach can digest whatever we eat. If the digestive power is sufficient, then whatever we can eat will be digested by the fire in the stomach. Similarly, a devotee does not have to try separately to attain liberation. That very service to the Supreme Person of Godhead is the process of his liberation. Because to engage oneself in the service of the Lord is to liberate oneself from material entanglement. Hmm. So we have to liberate ourselves from material entanglement. So what is this material entanglement? First there is gross entanglement, then there is subtle entanglement. All of them have to we have to liberate ourselves from that. And just imagine, I mean, we cannot even uh, we cannot even imagine. As in, if you just think about how exalted this just uh, stage of liberation is for us in our own. Uh, practice of devotional service, you know, all of us are far from liberation. and uh, But that liberation can be very easily attained, is what Shastra says, by, by, by doing bhakti. So liberation means no gross entanglement, no subtle entanglement. That is liberation. What is liberation? Anybody wants to explain? What is this liberated state? I just explained, but I just want somebody to rephrase for better understanding. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Uh... I mean, free from material desires and uh, completely fixed his mind in the lotus so feet of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, free from material entanglement, material desires, material entanglement, both at a gross level and subtle level. Gross means subtle anything. Level. How do we understand Prabhu? Subtle yeah. level. So, gross means uh, in everything connected with the body. Right? Subtle right. means connected with the mind. Mind. Okay. So even mind should be free from material entanglement. Right? Sometimes externally, for example, like sannyasi is externally uh, seems like he's liberated from material entanglement. But internally he might not be. Right? So it is both external and internal. Gross and subtle. Right. Basically, in, we just like I have been repeated, repeating, repeatedly saying that we just look at ourselves as a spirit soul. We look at everybody else as spirit souls. And we don't just don't look at this material world as material. Right? And then we don't get affected by anything material. <clears throat> Brahma Bhuta is clearly explained in the second chapter only, Bhagavad Gita. Right? Uh, Arjuna asks Krishna, what are the qualities of this? Divya, divine consciousness. The divine consciousness is liberation, Brahma Bhuta. So you can read the uh, second chapter, end of the second chapter after what fifty one verse fifty one, I think. Yeah. Um, where Krishna is answering, do uh, ask what are the qualif what are the what is the characteristics what are the characteristics of a person in the divine consciousness mm, and krishna explains some very beautiful verses actually we have to come to that stage that stage is not is not the stage of love of krishna it's the stage of liberation uh, it's a, for devotees it's uh, uh, not the per goal but an intermediate milestone and that has to be achieved and that becomes easily achieved. And Shastra says, not that I have experience of it, but Shastra says that it can be easily achieved simply by chanting 
हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र ही नाम अभास ऑफकोर्स दिस इज अ लिटल बिट कंफ्यूजिंग बिकॉज नाम अपराधा ऑफकोर्स अदर ऑफेंसेस वी कैन ओवरकम मे बी बट दिस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट अपराधा फॉर मोस्ट पीपल इज अहम एंड ममा राइट रिटेनिंग मेटीरियल अटैचमेंट now if we don't retail material attachment and we chant then it is nama basa means we are ready for liberation right now the difficult question is but if i have aham and mama what do i do if i am attached materially what do i do because to come to the stage of chanting in nama basa i should overcome this uh, aham and mama what is the solution is the same thing we keep discussing every class it don't be any different because that's what that's all we have to actually understand clearly hmm. so is is the question clear nama bhasa gives liberation but to actually come to nama bhasa we have to overcome the 10th offense which is this aham and mama being material attached even after hearing so many things about the glories of the holy name etc <coughs> which is itself liberation which is itself the stage of liberation so how do we overcome this aham and mama by keeping our senses engaged with the devotional service to prabhu okay keeping engaged engaging our senses in devotional service okay mm -hmm. by 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 serving serving the the devotees who are in that stage. Yeah, serving okay. devotee. So it's answer is the same. You should not think at all. You should just simply answer. Shavanam seva. That's all. Right? Association, Shavanam seva. These are the things. But seva means with clear consciousness. Right? So most effective is association because association will make us serve in the right consciousness. And Shavanam. Repeatedly hearing that I am not the body and spirit soul. I am not the body and spirit soul. then it will become slightly stuck in our head right and associating with those devotees who are not living on that material platform mm. and then seeing that yeah by my attached to this aham and mama and then when we hear and we uh, understand saying that okay achieving krishna means we have to overcome this otherwise we can't achieve krishna so if you are serious about achieving krishna then we have to overcome this aham and mama because this is illusion real aham real mama uh, real aham is i am servant of krishna real mama is krishna is mine i am krishna's right so we have to come to that stage and to be able to come to that stage we have to give up this uh, attachment to this material world so when we also hear about this when you associate with devotees who are practicing bhakti on that platform your devotees then we will come out of this aham and mama and then we will chant in nama bhasa then we'll get liberation not just liberation actually very soon we'll get krishna prema if you can come to nama basa that's what shastra says hmm. shila bilva mangal thakur explained this position very nicely he said if i have unflinching devotion unto the lotus feet of the lord hmm. then mukti or liberation serves me as my maid servant uh, mukti the maid servant is always ready to do whatever i ask so like really trivial position mukti position is very very trivial for a bhakta for a devotee liberation is no problem at all liberation takes place without separate endeavor bhakti is therefore far better than mukti or the impersonal position the impersonal is under go severe penances and austerities to obtain mukti but the bhakta simply by engaging himself in the bhakti process especially in chanting hari krishna he immediately develops control over the tongue see we should have developed control over the tongue otherwise we are not chanting hari krishna properly hmm? somebody who is chanting hari krishna properly immediately develops control over the tongue by engaging it in chanting and accepting remnants of food stuff hmm? so if we have not achieved control over our tongue we are not chanting properly as soon as the tongue is controlled naturally all other senses are controlled automatically sense control is the perception of the yoga principle perfection of the yoga principle and once liberation begins immediately 
as soon as he engages himself in the service of the Lord. But this is pure devotion. This is again that Brahma Bhuta Prasanna. It is confirmed by Kapil Dev that bhakti or devotional service is gariyasi, more glorious than Siddhi liberation. And so if we engage ourselves in pure devotional service, then automatically we come to liberation. See, for a gnani, he has to come to liberation, then he has to start devotional service. For a bhakta, if he is engaging in devotional service purely, he will automatically come to liberation. Hmm? Again, like I said yesterday, not Mishra Bhakti. Mishra Bhakti will take us to Swarga. Shuddha Bhakti, even though we might not be on the completely pure platform, but desiring to get to that platform, if we just try to serve without any ulterior motive, simply by engaging in that, and Prabhupada specifically here clear say, clearly says, especially in the chanting Hare Krishna. Right? A simple solution is, if anybody is very grossly stuck materially, just increase chanting. Just increase chanting. Hmm? The devotional service, pure devotional service, side effect is moksha dalagita krit. Moksha becomes like trivial. So it means it becomes very easily achieved. Right? But if we are not able to do properly, then the only process we should really invest time is chanting. But importantly, chanting is incomplete without shravanam and kirtanam. Right? So we must hear and glorify as much as possible also. And then actually by hearing, our kirtanam becomes perfect because we understand uh, we are not chanting in any misconception or in some mental speculation, with some mental speculation, we clearly understand I am not this body, I am spirit soul, I am servant of Krishna, Krishna is the master, he is the enjoyer, I am not the enjoyer, I am the enjoyed. Right? So I want to come to the position of serving him. Purely. And with that mood, we chant. Right? O Radha, O Krishna, please engage me in your service. And then automatically control, tongue will get controlled, which means that we will only speak about Krishna. We will only hear about Krishna. <laughs> and so there are so many nice things to actually to achieve in bhakti to achieve meaning not like material achieve. To reach those stages by our effort and uh, Guru Krishna's mercy uh, that actually is very very exciting in one way mm, very exciting because in material life actually there is no excitement it's all yeah it's all down going down right but in spiritual activities uh, it's all going up and we don't know how much more how much more there is to go right and so it's it's really exciting and Mm, uh, that that there is no limit to this perfection, so there is no end. Uh, there is no end to these activities of perfection, right? We can keep, keep, keep. Uh, yeah, when devotees really reach even exalted position, they'll be thinking, "Oh, I'm not serving Krishna properly at all," which means so there is no end at all to this. Right? It's so beautiful. Mm. Anyway, so the the process, bhakti process, is very very powerful. We have to follow it properly. Uh, if you are stuck, then we have to. We need people who can pull us out, who are pure devotees, right? And then we engage in shavanam and kirtanam, chanting Hare Krishna. Actually, this will give us tremendous progress. But uh, why we why service is encouraged initially? Um, because we don't have so much taste for shavanam and kirtanam. So, people are engaged in service. But it's actually, uh, if we are engaging, what is the sign that we are engaging in quality service? If we are engaging in good quality service, what should happen? <clears throat> we should have taste for chanting. Yeah, we should immediately develop taste for hearing and chanting. Right? Because that is the idea of service. The idea of service is to bring that attachment back to Shavanam Kirtanam. 
nobody can be attached to service without being attached to savanam kirtanam that means that they are not attached to service they are just attached to service on it's not spiritual attachment transcendental attachment because we are, if we are actually engaged in service that service should actually bring us to bring give us taste in chavanam kirtanam and then what is bhakti without knowing about krishna without taking krishna's names it just become mundane mundane activities right so it's a it's a very beautiful process you know the process designed is so beautiful but i see sometimes many devotees get stuck with just seva 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 and then when we tell them saying that shavan do sh shavanam like ah, i don't have time actually it's not that they don't have time they don't have interest right and chanting also they are okay way in uh, kirtan to be sitting and doing kirtan for hours but they they can't sit and chant hari krishna mahamantra so which means that there is still lot more involvement required mm -hmm. actually anyway i uh, maybe extend this conversation so i was just reading chaitanya charitamrita mm. chaitanya mahaprabhu is talking to sanatan goswami and he is saying on this very famous verse diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan se ka se kale krishna kare tare atma sam ha atma sam atma sam means he treats the devotee equal to himself meaning he is the devotee is come to the transcendental platform when <laughs> diksha kale at the time of initiation so i was just thinking saying that actual initiation is when we have actually come out of material entanglement that is actual initiation right so in one sense the external in <laughs> whatever we are doing now is external initiation uh, that initiation should if it is not going if it is not bringing us uh to the stage of to the transcendental platform basically it has to bring us to the transcendental platform ideally one has done one has surrendered to such an extent mm, that he is already given up material things then he should get initiated as per chaitanya charitamrita as per shri chaitanya mahaprabhu okay but today we are taking it the other way around right we are saying it's okay however it is take initiated even you after initiation do whatever you want that's that's not what is being recommended hmm. so uh, take uh, krishna kare thara atma sam and when that atma sama happens which means that the body of the devotee is transcendental then whatever uh, brahma samhita is saying karmani nirdhati kintu cha bhakti bada and uh, then that okay all sinful reactions are destroyed right so the the we need to come to this platform of being free from material entanglement otherwise really there is no question of progress right but because bhakti is so powerful it is said that by doing bhakti we will come to that stage but if by doing bhakti we are not come coming to that stage then that means there is an issue that means we are not doing something properly right because bhakti is so powerful i'm so i'm just trying to explain from different angles uh, how this bhakti is so powerful uh, that first of all by the initial practice of bhakti only we should have come to brahma bhuta uh, and after that we should get initiated then we should get krishna prema uh, right what like what chaitanya mahaprabhu demonstrated right he got initiated and then he is like crying in ecstasy that's what is expected right but uh, it's okay i mean if you are not it's okay as in that's what has become the norm that we are getting initiated even with material entanglement uh, entanglements but at least after the initiation we should come out of the entanglement and like yesterday i i had pasted one message right in the group um so what is saying about initiation yeah in in his previous life when narad ji was impregnated with spiritual knowledge by the grace of great sages there was a tangible change in his life although he was only a boy of 5 years 
This is an important symptom visible after initiation by the bona fide spiritual master. Hmm. Important. What is the important visible symptom? That there has to be a tangible change in one's life. Hmm. Quick change in life. That is an indication that we have actually, actually, the, the problem is not, we should not say that, oh, okay, okay. I didn't get any tangible uh, change in life. So that means Guru is not bona fide. No, we are not bona fide. Because we are not accepting it with that mood. Actually, Guru expects us to come to that mood before taking initiation. A complete faith that my now my life will change. I'm going to skyrocket towards Krishna. But we are we are surrendering with very we are not even surrendering maybe you know should at least we should surrender. Uh, but this is very lukewarm lukewarm surrender. So it doesn't actually it doesn't bring about a quick change in our life. It takes time. But if we surrender with that mood, then there should be a quick change. Like there has to be like, you know, tangible change. Prabhupada is saying tangible. Meaning somebody should be able to perceive it. Uh, devotee himself or other devotees or other people around that person who got initiated. You should be, oh, this is amazing. There's some change happened. Because the mercy is going to start flowing more after initiation because Guru is a transparent via media. Hmm. So these things are supposed to be experienced. But unfortunately, the way we are approaching these things uh, doesn't look like many people will experience. Hmm. Some people have experienced, I have seen, I have been told that complete surrender to Guru, they have seen immense changes in their in their practice of bhakti, in their uh, vision towards this material life, what their approach towards life, seriousness to bhakti, so many things, they have, they have experienced change. That has to be the mood or that has to be, that is what is supposed to be experienced. Right, because I mean, I, why am I uh, stressing on this? Because actually, this is a shortcut. And somebody was asking me, saying that, and I was saying, "Chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra." Then they were asking me, "What is there a shortcut for this?" Actually, I didn't realize. I didn't realize actually. After that, I realized that yes, shortcut is a serious initiation. It's a shortcut. You know, because chanting Hare Krishna will anyway produce results. But we want a shortcut, right? We want extra mercy. That extra mercy will come through a serious initiation. Serious initiation. Not a casual initiation. And then we should quickly reach liberation. Brahma Bhuta. Not be indifferent. Be indifferent towards this material world. Material happenings. Indifferent meaning, yeah, whatever it is, okay, happiness, distress, it's fine. Hmm. Sanatana Goswami, when he comes to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanatana Goswami has an itching, itchy source, like his body is full of source, like, you know, there'll be boils and, you know, like water coming out or sometimes blood coming out. And the, what is Sanatana Goswami's mood? Sanatana Goswami is thinking, oh, my itchy body, I'm going to give up this body because I can't serve Krishna anymore. Right? And then he doesn't go near, uh, he can't go to Jagannath Mandir because he's thinking that, oh, my body is contaminated. If somebody who is in touch with the Lord's service, if he comes in touch with me, then I'm going to be responsible for that offense. See, I mean, he's thinking that he has body source and somebody who is that is contamination and if somebody comes in touch with me and they go and serve the Lord I'll be responsible for that offense and today we are told that it's okay even if Matajis are not clean they can come into the temple I mean our Acharyas are showing by example right anyway so the point was that 
Sanatana Goswami is not thinking about his body. He is thinking about how service is getting affected because of that. Right? And um, and uh, the whole mood is about how do I serve? So this is indifference to material body. So he's, he's upset. He's disappointed. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, you have given your body to me. You don't have any right to destroy it. So at the time of initiation, we give our body to Guru. So we have to be, we should not be careless to such an extent that we will put the body in such an unusable condition that bhakti cannot happen because it's not our body. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very nicely says, that I cannot come to Vrindavan. I am here in Jagannath Puri because of the order of my mother. And whatever I want to get done in Vrindavan, I am getting it done through your body. So you have no right to you know, destroy your body. Meaning, at the time of initiation, actually, we give ourselves completely to Guru. Now we become an instrument in Guru's hands. Guru is going to do whatever he wants to do through us. So we should be responsible enough to keep the body at least we should try to keep the body in workable conditions so that the services can go on. But at the same time, we should also understand saying that I should be indifferent to it. Meaning, I should not give it too much more importance than required. Focus should be devotional service. So these are all very important considerations. If we, if we can follow all this, then obviously... Mukti is nothing. Mukti, achieving Mukti is like no-brainer. Hmm. So, so many, so much of depth is there. We, uh, because I read this liberation, this whole, this, this sequence of verses, right? Uh, Kapil Dev is talking about this, uh, you know, coming to this um, platform of liberation, Brahma Bhuta. Hmm. So it is triggering a lot of thoughts. Okay, so I'll stop here. If anybody has any questions, comments, we can discuss. Did we, was it too complex? Was it understandable? Anybody has any questions? Because I don't know. I mean, Is it clear, not clear? Require some elaboration, explanation. Please feel free so that it will benefit others also. Oh, the silence. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> what does yeah. that silence mean? <laughs> everyone is waiting for other everyone is waiting for others to speak. <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. It's understandable, Prabhu. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. The key point is to grow in path of bhakti is to serve and hear and chant. Okay. Okay. If I have to summarize, let me just summarize because it is a little bit complex presentation. The summary is that one has to be serious enough in bhakti to come out of material entanglement. Ideally, a person who has gotten out of material entanglement gets initiation. And at that time, he becomes, Krishna says that I treat him just like me, which means he's come to the transcendental platform. This is ideal. If that is not happening, at least we should take initiation. But with a serious mood, we should take initiation. And when we take initiation in serious mood, then what should happen? Immediately, there should be tangible change in our life. And that is a shortcut. What is the process to be followed? Process to be followed is Shavanam Kirtanam. Right? And the most powerful process is chanting Hare Krishna. So chanting of Hare Krishna will bring us automatically to stage of liberation. For us to be effective in our chanting, we need to do proper quality shavanam. And the shortcut for making progress here is the initiation. 
right so if somebody is rightly initiated in the right mood they should make tangible progress in their spiritual life and see themselves coming out of this material entanglement and surrendering their life for the pleasure of guru and krishna right so this is required and then when we come there as a side effect liberation happens and then we move move on from nama bhasa we come to nama shuddha nama and we get krishna prema right so it's the mood of surrender that is very very important mood of surrender to guru mood of surrender to krishna and so please note i mean it's a very like what should i say like essence of so many different things yeah okay yeah i want you to hari krishna prabhu yeah uh so, so as devotees we should not be aiming for liberation right uh, yeah. but all of this again leading to liberation uh, i'm i'm little yeah. confused yeah without liberation we can't achieve krishna prema brahma okay. bhuta prasannatma na sochati na kanchati samas sarveshu bhuteshu madhyam labate param meaning liberation is the stage when pure devotion starts meaning if somebody is materially entangled then he cannot get pure devotion so for us liberation is a step milestone important milestone we have to get past this material entanglement the material attachment to body gross subtle we have to overcome that without that there is no question of krishna prema so though it's a side effect it's an important side effect which has to be experienced by a devotee is it clear okay prabhu understood okay yeah. Okay, there's nothing else. Stop.